Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, The Concierge Assistant. Woohoo! I am so excited about today's webinar. We've been preparing for this actually for quite a while. I've been thinking about today's webinar because I wanted to do something really different and special in honor of Administrative Professionals Week, which is coming up very, very soon, next week, actually. And um, hello, everyone. Yes, come on in, say hello. Let us know where you are from. So excited. We're going to have, uh, let's see, 6,700 assistants registered for today's webinar. Now, everyone may not be able to make the webinar, but um, many of our uh, people do play the replay link. So that's great. For those of you who are here, you are in for a real treat today. So um, like I said, I'm super excited. We're doing this in honor of Administrative Professionals Week. And also today is scheduled for 90 minutes. Now I realize you may not be able to stay the entire 90 minutes, but if you can't, if you have to leave for a while, please come back on toward the end because we have two grand giveaway prizes, each valued, I think they're at $1,600. So it's a big deal. And today we also have several, several wonderful giveaways from our sponsor. Let's see, I've got their little bag here. Purple Lizards Promotion is sponsoring today's events. And I have all kinds of goodies here sitting next to me. You can't see them, but we're gonna be giving away some great cool stuff throughout today's webinar. I will stop three times throughout the 90 minute period, and Malia's gonna help me. We're gonna draw five names each time we stop of the winners. So hopefully you will be a lucky winner today. Like I said, there's some really cool stuff. So good morning, good morning. Yes, come on in everyone. Um, let's go through some logistics first of all. So the learning part of our session will be about, what did I schedule? About an hour um, and 15 minutes. And then we'll have Q&A. And then uh, I have, like I said, a couple of fascinating grand giveaways at the end of the webinar. You can submit your questions during the webinar. So you don't have to wait until the end. And I finally figured out how you actually do this because <laughs> I viewed one of our webinars last month when, or earlier this month when Julie Reed was doing the webinar. So now I could tell you exactly what to do. If you have a question, type your message down in the chat in the lower right hand corner. And if you look to the right, the upper right, there's three little bullet points or little dots. Click on those and then I believe it says submit your question or ask a question. If you do that, then Malia will be able to pull out your questions much faster than trying to dig through the chat, which gets very lengthy. Um, by the way, our chat holds about a thousand people. So if you didn't get in, I'm sorry, but uh, hopefully you could still hear us. And thank you to those who are in the chat and participating. If you have any technical issues, please uh, type those in the chat. Again, this is the only way that we can communicate with you is through the chat. We do have a handout for today. So I hope everyone got the handout because we are going through a ton of information. I have so many tips for you today. So I hope you have the handout and you can follow along with me. Yes, happy Administrative Professionals Month to all of you. And also we will send a replay link at the end of the webinar. So you've got the handout, which is every bit of information I'm gonna to cover today. So that should be helpful. And then if you missed any of my comments that I'm gonna make in between, you can go back, you have the replay link. So let's see, oh, good evening from South Africa. Hello, Susan. I'm having the same issue. Oh, I hate to hear that. I hope you get through okay. All right, everyone. So let's get started. So, you know, when it comes to assistance and training, often we focus on the technical skills. We focus on, which I focus on, the interpersonal and soft skills. 
That's the only kind of training I actually do, the interpersonal and the soft skills. And then we also focus on uh, the administrative part of the job. You know, the things such as managing your emails and prioritizing, um, calendaring, those types of things. Rarely, if ever, do we focus on what I'm going to talk to you about today. And yet, this is really important. And that's why I chose the topic I chose for today. If you think about the many hats that you need to wear by being a great concierge assistant, you will truly shine. You will stand out. You will put people at ease. You will make your guests feel welcome and warm. You will please your executive. And the list goes on. We're going to talk about that in a little while. Uh, I have a disclaimer. I don't know everything. Believe me, we would have volumes and volumes of information. A lot of this information comes from me personally that I have learned over the years in terms of protocol and etiquette. But as always, I did my research before this webinar. I Googled a lot of things about business etiquette, business protocol, office etiquette, social etiquette, dining etiquette, cell phone etiquette. I looked up about everything you could possibly think of to see what has changed and what hasn't changed. And you know, a lot of it hasn't really changed other than of course, when we get to uh, cell phone etiquette, cause that's new, but a lot of the other pieces of the business protocol are the same things we talked about years ago. The big deal is today, because we live in a very casual society, a lot of this has gone by the wayside. And it, it really, um, it just looks poorly when somebody doesn't really know proper business call or business protocol and business etiquette. So I want you to know that in today's world, this is actually more important than it was in the past. You know, since I was 18 years old out of high school and went to work in the business world as a secretary, I have always believed that I would never lower my standards to others, that I would always keep my bar high, that I always looked to the executive assistants who really had that poise and that polish. I watched the executives who shined and, and they had class. I looked at managers. I observed from when I was a very young age and I still watch today. But the idea being is my personal philosophy. I don't lower my standards. I have my standards. I live by those standards and I don't care what everyone else is doing. In other words, unless they kept their standards high. And I want to share something really interesting really quickly that I just thought of. And it was something I heard years ago from a chief human resource officer of a large corporation. They were bringing me in to train their executive assistants. And he explained it so well. And he was, you know, a more seasoned executive. And he said, you know, Joan, my concern, our concern is that our employees, our executive assistants are, you know, striving and thinking, here's the standard. If you could see my hand at all, here's the standard, you know, of which they should be operating. He said, the problem is the standard has been lowered. So the standard used to be up here very high. And now over the years, the standards have come down. Employees are striving for this, but they don't understand. The standard's been lowered. I hope that makes sense to you. And I hope you keep that in your mind. So the idea is keep your bar high. And I'm going to share with you all the little things that you can do. So first of all, let's get your hand out. I hope you have your hand out. And you're going to turn to page two in your handout. We're going to do a fill in the blank to start. If you don't have a handout, just take notes. Um, only this first part will be a fill in the blank. And then everything else is in writing. So you don't have to worry too much. But 
the first thing I always ask is why? Why should you care about being a great concierge? Okay, well, let me tell you, let's fill in the blanks. So the first one is because business thrives on relationships. That's what business is all about. It thrives on our relationships. And so we need to make sure that we're always putting our best foot forward and, and displaying ourselves in the best way possible. Second is you want to make visitors feel welcome. You want to make them feel at ease. So I travel all the time. 85% of my work is on-site training. And I've been doing this for 28 years. And I go to a lot of new companies and I go to different cities. And believe me, I want to feel at ease. I have enough on my mind knowing that I have to perform and do an awesome job with the training. There are very high expectations set by my clients. So I don't want to have to worry and stress about the logistics and, and everything. I want to be informed. And so um, when I travel, you know, Malia does a great job of reaching out to those companies that I will be visiting and getting this information for us. So that's a big reason. If you work with a lot of visitors and people who come from outside your area, it's critically important. They're coming in for business. They are stressed enough, they're traveling, they have jet lag, they've got enough on their minds. The third bullet, make a first good impression. First impressions still matter. People will form an impression of you that fast, that quick. So you've got to make that good first impression. Very important. The next bullet, you want to be a great concierge because you want to be viewed as a star assistant. At least I hope you do. I hope you want to be viewed as that assistant who stands out, who knows their stuff or his stuff, who has some class and knows etiquette and protocol. The next one is to, of course, make your executive proud. I know I certainly did. I wanted my executive to be really proud of me and, and to think highly of me. And I wanted my executive to look good to others, okay? Um, to not feel embarrassed. This is a good one. To not be embarrassed because you don't know what to do when others do. I think that's a huge one. Because people who, the people you interact with who do know what to do, who do know what's right, you're not going to necessarily know it, but it can definitely be embarrassing because you feel awkward and you're not sure what to do. So today, I want to tell you a lot of things about exactly what to do so you are not embarrassed in the future. The next is to make your company look good, right? Of course you want to make your company look good. And thank you, Courtney. I just noticed you said administrative professionals are on stage 100% of the time. How are we carrying ourselves? What messages are we sending with our body, our language, our words? Excellent, excellent. And I will talk about that, so thank you. The next bullet point, it's on page two of your handout. You've probably never heard of this. It's called the HALO, H-A-L. O effect. And we talk about this uh, in my world class and star program when we talk about professional image, professional branding. The halo effect is if other people view you as uh, like put together and you look neat and organized or your workspace looks neat and organized, the halo effect is they're going to assume that about other things, that they're going to assume you're organized in everything else you do and how you approach your job. So if you appear disheveled and out of control, they're gonna, the halo effect is you're gonna be disheveled with everything you do at work. So that's a fact. The halo effect actually exists, you can Google it. And last, to set a professional tone. It doesn't matter that we live in a very relaxed, casual society. There is still business protocol. There is business etiquette. Business is big money, big money. And so you have to understand that as an assistant. 
that this it's serious. Business is serious. So while we have fun at business, it's serious. It's a serious game. It's very competitive. So more than ever, you need to know this stuff. All right. Are we good on that part a moment? Okay. So hopefully you've got all the answers. I'll run through them very quickly. Starting on page two, the answer is thrives, ease, impression, star, proud, embarrassed, company, halo, and tone. Okay, are you ready? Because we're going to get into the nitty gritty and we're just going to go at it. And even though you have the handout, I'm going to add my own personal pieces to this. Thank you for letting me know you're all good. All right, we're going to start with visitors. I put visitors first on purpose because it's really, really important to me. And I'm sure many of you uh, are working with visitors and, and taking a big part in that. So as it says in your handout, you know, or maybe it's not there, out of town visitors really rely on you. And while you don't have to know everything, you should know a little bit about a lot of things, like the, the hotels, the restaurants, the car services. Let me make a point here. Not everyone uses Uber or Lyft. I am not an Uber person. I am not a Lyft person. I use town car services. So let's dig in. On page two, um, this has to do with when you are making recommendations to your visitors, the kinds of things that you should be knowledgeable, knowledgeable about. I mean, I remember when I was an assistant and we had visitors, a lot of times they would come up to me and ask me about what's going on in town. Where's this? Where's that? Where's the best restaurant? What about shows? I have some free time, right? Do many of you go through that as well with your visitors? So the first thing is to be culturally mindful in such things as the arts, music, what sporting events you know are out there. And the idea is you don't have to love art, okay? And you don't have to go to art museums. It's just knowing in town if somebody says that they want to go, they have some free time, they want to do that, where do they go? Okay, so we have a beautiful theater called the Smith Center. I go there once in a while, but not all the time, but I know it's there. So it's the idea of knowing what's available so you can talk to people, right? Um, the best places to eat. Now, we're going to talk about this in a little more detail, okay, when I talk about sizing up your visitor. But... Uh, you know, for me, I'm always wanting to know what are the nicer restaurants. When I put in a full day of training and I worked really hard and I've been going at it for like eight, ten hours, actually, I want to go sit down and have a nice dinner. I don't want to go grab a hamburger, go to a fast food place or things like that. And I imagine a lot of the visitors you work with would be the same way. Um, knowing the finest hotels in your area, as well as mid-range and more um, cost-effective hotels. How to hire a limousine if you need to do that. How to get hold of the town car services. Who's the best? And maybe you're not going to get those for them, but they're going to ask you, you know, who should you, who should we use while we're in town? Malia finds that out often for me. And sometimes the, the other companies that you work with or people you work with, they'll have, um, you know, a service that they love to use. So that brings me to the next bullet point. Size up your guests as best you can so you could recommend what might be appropriate for them. So if before they come and visit, can you size them up? Can you tell? Are they more casual and relaxed and informal? Um, are they okay with the mid mid-range restaurant or so forth or they are they you know a little higher up uh in terms of wanting something a little classy or more fine dining maybe four or five star restaurants do they want to stay at the the ritz or those fancier hotels or are they okay with a holiday inn so you try to size your guest up ahead of time or 
if they have an assistant, you ask their assistant, right? You need to find this out if you're going to make recommendations. So if you think about it, when I say concierge, and I forgot to mention this in the beginning, a concierge knows a lot or knows, yeah, knows a lot. They actually do. They're the ones that when you're visiting in town, you go to the concierge and you expect them to be able to tell you everywhere to go and how to get around. That's really what you are. That is a hat you wear, and it is an important hat. All right, let's keep going because there's a lot here. So before you recommend a hotel, please, please, please pay attention to this. Make sure you have personally viewed the sleeping rooms, or if it's been around and it's a name brand hotel, you call them and ask them the last time they renovated. Believe me, there are some awesome, great, big name hotels out there, but if they haven't renovated in 10 or 15 years, it's happened to me in the early days, okay? And, and what then, to me, that assistant, it, it kind of sheds a poor light on that assistant. Now, you might say, well, that's not really our job or our responsibility, but it is. To me, if I'm recommending things, I want to be absolutely sure so I would, I would do my own inspection sites when I was an assistant. Or like I said, at least get on the phone and you could ask, you know, when was the last time the hotel was renovated? That's really important. Next is to peruse restaurant reviews. So for me personally, as an assistant, I used to go to some of the restaurants myself and eat the food myself and see the service for myself. Okay, again, if I'm making recommendations, I want to be absolutely sure. Or if I didn't personally go, then my executive, uh, of course, would go to some of those fine dining restaurants and I would ask my executive for recommendations. So the idea, again, is to have this awareness. You don't have to go out and spend a lot of money. I'm not saying go out every week and spend money and, you know, try all these different restaurants. But you might want to just try a few once in a while and treat yourself to a nice dinner. Or maybe once in a while, I don't know, I'm just saying maybe your company would actually support that and financially cover that for you because knowing that you're making these recommendations, maybe you could persuade them to, to cover that expense because you want to make sure you're giving the, you know, the very best. All right. We're still on um, under the recommendations. Now we're going to go on to the next section, awareness. So we're still talking about your visitors. Awareness to me, let me describe it. it. It's general awareness again, but of other things that are happening so you could guide your visitors better. And I've tried to give you some specific examples. So let's go through those together. And if you do have the handout, I love my highlighter. I always highlight the important words and things that I want to stand out because it's hard to go back and read through every little thing. So for awareness, this is a big one. Pay attention to the big events in your town because big events affect the airport. It affects travel. It affects ground transportation. It's happened to me. So uh, as a visitor traveling somewhere, I was in a city in the Midwest. This was a couple several years back and I was supposed to leave on a Friday and I was in the downtown area. And just as class got out, there was this big event in downtown right near where I had a leave and traffic was all backed up, but I had a plane to catch. So do you see you need, again, think about your traveler. Now, a lot of you don't travel to the extent that the executives do or I do. You know, a lot of assistants are not traveling, you know, 70% of the year. So it's hard to put your mind in that frame of a traveler, but I'm, trust me, I'm telling you this because I do it all the time and I wanna help you look awesome and I wanna help your visitors. Um, another example, here in Las Vegas, of course, we're a convention city, we're huge. 
and we have one big convention that comes in every January, 120,000 or more attendees converge on this town. Can you imagine what the airport's like? Can you imagine what it's like sometimes you can't even get a town car service? So, you know, be aware of those things so you can alert your traveler and help them do a better job of planning. Uh, the next one I have, you know, of course, there's a lot of security uh, check-in protocol today. Um, so thinking about, you know, letting your visitor know when they are checking in, when they come to your facility, especially if it's a big campus and such, are they going to have to go through security? What is going to be required? Not just you go through security, but are there any particular papers I need, any particular identification uh, that I need? Again, make your, your visitor feel at ease. Make them feel comfortable. They need to have as, as little stress as possible when they're traveling. Um, another idea, if your office is in a downtown area, let your visitor know where they should not walk after certain hours. So again, this happened to me years ago. I was working with an awesome client um, in a fairly big city in the Midwest and they offered, they came to me and said, Joan, at, once it gets dark, you don't want to go here, here, or here. Stay within these parameters, okay? I mean, you're a stranger in a town. You don't know what to do, and so maybe you just want to go walk and explore. Well, there are certain places you shouldn't be walking and exploring. Um, so keep that in mind. If you have a large campus, many of you have large campuses. I love it when someone sends us a map of the campus and they mark the building uh, that I need to go to. It is so helpful. And by the way, I'm a visual person. So it's not enough to give me um, instructions like uh, go into the, the main lobby and then once you get passed through security, then you're gonna walk out the door's toward the back, and then you're going to go to the left and go in that first building to the left. Do you see? I'm like, what? You know, show me a map. Give me a map. So, again, keep that in mind. That's really, really helpful. Oh, my gosh. We're going like crazy over here. I wanted to see how everyone's doing and catch my breath a minute. Um, Christine, you are welcome. Um, yeah, personal experience is the best education. You know, it's one thing to, to talk about travel, book travel. It's a whole different thing when you're doing it all the time and it's part of your life. So I'm happy to help. Let's see, what do we have next? Oh, the next one is a good point. Um, letting your visitor know how long it takes to get from their hotel to the venue where they need to be for meeting or whatever, or if they're coming right from the airport. Now notice I have in big letters, not how many miles, it's how long does it take? You know, in California, you could be, you know, 10 miles from something and it'll take you an hour to get there. I don't wanna know how many miles, I wanna know. How long does it typically take? And letting people know, like, um, I have a trip to Baltimore coming up in May. Very excited. I'm going to go do some speaking up there. I have not been to Baltimore in forever and ever. I don't remember anything. And um, what they were telling me right now, there's a lot of construction going on. So while it might typically take 30 to 40 minutes from the airport, count on 45 to 60 minutes. Do you see that is helpful to me? That's really important information. Uh, let's see. Yeah, traffic in California is insane. <laughs> insane. Okay, what do we have next? Can your guests get your company's corporate rate? Now again, we always ask, but a lot of people may not think to ask. Your visitors may not think about it or their assistant may not think to ask you. So again, offer it up. 
uh, as a visitor, we don't know what we don't know. But if you say, okay, if you stay at the Hilton, you can get our corporate rate there. That's important information, especially if that visitor is going to expense your company for anything. Like for me, I get reimbursed for my travel expenses for the training. So obviously I want to get the best rate because that goes back to my client. Um, now, sometimes, of course, for a lot of your visitors, they're not going to get reimbursed. Okay, how are we doing? So we're still in our realm of the visitor's world. Now we're going to move on to when they come on site. Now, there's tons of information about that, but I just picked out a few little things that I wanted to share with you. So, again, here are the little, little uh, nuances, beverages use a coaster put down a coaster okay again we're looking at what is the most proper protocol that you can use that is going to make you stand out and make your guests feel comfortable now you might say for a casual environment we don't use coasters and stuff well think about your guest so if your guest is an executive coming in then definitely it should be a little more upscale but i'll tell you we use coasters here for anyone it doesn't matter it doesn't matter the level they're at we don't view it that way we just view it as that is the, the right thing to do um also with that this is a big pet peeve of mine when somebody hands me a bottle of water you know, no, give me a glass, please. Could I have a glass? I'm not gonna sit there and squeeze a bottle of water. And especially the way some of these bottles are today, you go to drink it and it goes all over the place. So if you're going to offer water to your guests or set it up in a room, have a pitcher of water and glasses and your coasters, again, make it look nice, make people feel special. That's the big thing that's missing today. Everybody is so slacked off that everything's just not special. It's just another day. It's just another event. Well, I think it's kind of sad we've forgotten how to feel special because it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. So, um, again, also things about even think about it, podiums. So if you host any meetings and there's a podium up in front, don't just throw a bunch of bottles up there under the podium. Give the speaker a glass. Again, when you're on stage and you're in front of a bunch of people, you're not going to sit there and want to deal with a bottle. A glass is what's appropriate. All right, the next one, make sure you are nicely groomed when you have visitors coming in. Of course, you should always be nicely groomed every day. But, of course, when you have visitors, take it up a notch for that day so we're going to go through a little bit of this there is a simple way to dress up casual i've done it today okay i'll tell you what it is and then i'll even show you what i have on today to let you get the hit the idea so while everybody dresses very casually you can dress it up in very simple ways if you are a female you could get a shoe with a wear a little heel right there it takes you up a couple notches versus a flat let's say um or if you're going to wear a flat okay i do have flats there are a lot of really cute flats today get a cute flat get something that jazzes up your outfit a little bit even if you're not really into shoes i know some women could care less but again, this is about you standing out, being a standout assistant. Um, a statement necklace. Now, I don't have one on today. What do you think I mean by a statement necklace? It's a necklace that makes a statement that people say, wow, look at that. And it brings attention to your face, which when you're speaking with people, you know, you want that. This is where they're looking. They're looking in this area at you. So. You don't have to spend a lot of money. This is the big thing I want you to know. It's a misconception. Um, the other thing you could do is just maybe wear a necklace and a bracelet and earrings that match or a cute casual jacket. So today, believe it or not, I'm gonna stand up a second. I have on jeans today, okay? I've got on my jeans, but you add a cute top, you add a cute little jacket, 
earrings, bam, okay? So you could do that, anyone could do that. And you don't have to spend a lot of money to do that, all right? Um, a rule of thumb, it's better to err on the more formal side than the real casual side. Again, we're thinking about visitors, people coming in. You're always better to take it up a notch. Okay, remember that. Take it up a notch. If a visitor has to wait in your area, make sure you are discreet on the telephone. They don't need to hear all your business, okay? Um, so be very discreet. Uh, you know, that's pretty plain and simple, right? All right, Malia, it is time to woo give some gifts away. I love this part. So is everyone ready <laughs> to let them know all names are entered in this drawing? While we only have so many people that fit in the chat, Malia draws from all the names. So if we have 6,700 names, I guess, or whatever, Malia is uh, doing the right thing by looking at all the names. So the first thing we have, from Purple Lizards Promotion, and I have to read this. It's a power bank kit, really cool. It's got all this nice stuff in here. Woohoo! All right, Malia, who is the winner of this? All right, the winner of the power bank kit is Sue Kaplan. Yay! Congratulations, Sue. Yay! Hey. <laughs> All right, the next thing, I love this because I love the color. A cordless mouse, isn't that cute? This little purple lizard's mouse. <laughs> I want this. I almost kept this for myself. <laughs> okay, who's our winner? Christine Garcia. Yay, Christine. Congratulations. All right, the next we have from Purple Lizards Promotions. This is a 10,000 milliamp power bank, can also charge phones wirelessly, digital readout. Wow, this sounds very, very cool. Very cool. Okay, the winner on the power bank is Sharon Andre. I hope I said that right, O-N-D-R-Y, Sharon Andre. Very good, Sharon, congratulations. By the way, really quick, I want all of you to know that Barry Sokol is uh, the owner of Purple Lizards. And I met Barry years and years ago. He's in Michigan. He's fabulous. He has some of the highest quality items that I've ever seen. I love what he has for promotional items. And uh, Barry and I have been very, very close. And then we kind of disconnected for a while. And now we reconnected and I'm so happy because Barry's um, been offering these wonderful, wonderful gifts for us to be able to give away to assistants. All right, the next item is actually an Office Dynamics item. My new Yay. book that came out in September, Greatest Administrative Secrets Revealed. So who's our winner? Our winner for the book is Ethel Kruger. Yay! Yay! Yes, Purple Lizards has very, very cool swag. You hit it. Okay, and the last one for this go around is my Give Yourself Permission to Live a Big Life book, which I love this book. Um, not because I wrote it, but <laughs> I love it because uh, it, it's filled with messages of inspiration and risk-taking for women of all walks of life. Yes, and also that is an autographed copy of yeah, Live Big Life. Yeah, autographed. It is, and this book is going to Mel, Melanie Johnson. Very good. Congratulations, Melanie. Woohoo! Okay, let's get back to work, and then we have five more in a little while. Let's see, where are we? Okay, we're getting into the business liaison piece. So, a business liaison... Liaison means connecting link. And that's what you are. You connect your executives to the world, right? Uh, just think about it. See yourself as this very special, special person. You are in the middle of connecting one person to another or to a group of people. So it's a tremendous role. It does carry a lot of responsibility. 
So how do you really be this great uh, liaison? So I have several ideas for you. On your in your handout, I hope I'm sorry, I'm looking at two things here, my notes in your handout. So um, you're on page four. The first idea is be at least as good as your leader, if not better. All right, what do I mean by that? I mean that you should be as talented and knowledgeable in your profession as your leader is in his or her profession and the work they do. And what I mean by better, there are times that as an assistant, you could know what is proper that your executive doesn't know. I mean, I think back to some of the executives I supported, they didn't know exactly what to do. They weren't the most polished maybe, or professional. So that's where I stood out, and that's where I could take over and make us look good as a team. So I hope that makes sense. The next is adhering to business protocol. Now again, I Googled everything, protocol, etiquette, all of it. But here's my take on it, as well as the research and what I found. So first of all, business etiquette protocol, whatever you want to call it, it is still important, especially if you want to get ahead in business. If, if your goal is to get ahead overall in the business world, you have to have this. It's very important if you work for a senior VP or hope to work for a senior VP or work in the C-suite. It is critically important. And if you want to be taken seriously and gain more respect, you should care about this. All right, what are some specifics? So first of all, and these are no particular order. These are just a lot of my random ideas. Arrive on time. That is one of the, uh, oh, what do I want to say? One of the best things that you can do and demonstrate that you take things seriously and you're respectful. Arriving on time is respectful of others. So think about that. And also I added, and on time. If you are hosting any kind of event or meeting, uh, whatever that might be, be sure you end on time. Again, it's about respecting other people's time. There's nothing that annoys me more than when people don't respect my time, that I rush out or I do something or I leave the office really quick to be somewhere and then I sit for 15 minutes. It's really disrespectful. Um, next, pay attention to names. Now, I have to work on this. I will admit I'm not great at names, but also I meet thousands of people over the years. So it's a little difficult for me, but the idea is names are important, correct? So what I like to try to do is identify a characteristic with that person that helps me remember their name. Do they remind me of someone? Is it something maybe about their hair or their style? Or maybe they're very outgoing. You know, they're, uh, we're in a workshop, a class of 20 people, and they're the one who, they're always outgoing. They're always speaking up. Is it the way they dress or they're um, smart or whatever it is? Just try to think of something that's going to help you remember their name. And then we should try to use the person's name a couple times within a very short period to help us remember. Now that's what I need to work on. So uh, I hope that helps. Um, the next, all right, we're gonna, you know, this is my big bugaboo right here, cell phone etiquette. Oh my gosh, drives me crazy what I see out there. So let's learn to be courteous with our cell phones. There is protocol, there is etiquette. So when others are in hearing distance, again, be discreet. I can't believe how people just talk to anyone about anything. When you're using your cell phone, be discreet. Be aware of your surroundings. Pay attention. And, and if you need to, step out of a certain area. Silence your phones in places where you should not take calls. Where are those? In a training session. 
in a training session. Yes, when you are in training, you don't have your phone there and you're constantly looking at it. That actually, if you're in my class, that's a, a ground rule. No looking at your phones. That's why you have a break. So unless it's an emergency and you're expecting your boss, um, I'll tell you something else. I belong to a group. In fact, tomorrow's our all day meeting. I belong to the Vistage group. This is a group of CEOs and business owners. We meet once a month and we go from 7.30 in the morning till five. We have working lunches and very little breaks. And we, what they call, we go topless to that meeting, meaning no phones are allowed on the table and we're not allowed to look at them until we get a short break, unless someone has an emergency, a business emergency. The other place, not when you're in meetings, okay? Please, please, please respect others. Be mindful, be engaged, watch what's going on. I can't believe how disengaged our world is. People are more interested in looking at their phone than looking at nature and enjoying their kids. Okay, don't even get me started on this one. All right, let's get back to business. Um, and, and at your desk, another place, you know, thinking about your phones. And I know that a lot of you are using them, you know, for business and you need to have access. Use good judgment is what I'm saying. Use good judgment. Okay, here's a new one to deal with wearable devices okay now we've got the wearable devices so don't look at them every single minute i have been around people over the last few years who now have the wearable device every two seconds they're they're looking doing this like really like you can't even like disconnect for a few minutes seriously instead of talking to me, instead of being engaged with me. So if you're gonna have a wear, wearable device, if you're at lunch, you know, again, thinking about the business world that you're in, you're walking through a hallway, you don't need to look at it every couple minutes. And I won't even buy one because you know what? I don't wanna look at it all the time. I just wanna get away from stuff for a while. All right, let's go on to webinar etiquette because we have a lot of people who attend webinars and I need to be moving fast now. Okay, really quick, don't write negative comments. We've seen it, we've seen it where somebody, you know, I think because they we can't see their faces. Um, people sometimes are rude in a webinar or complain or negative. No, 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 no. Just because there is a chat box you know, imagine you're in a room. Would you say that to my face in a room? So, and whether it's to me or other people who are in the chat, again, put your best foot forward. Okay, let's keep moving. Video conferencing, you know, where people can see you. Watch what you're doing. I've seen this happen. People watch your facial expressions, your behaviors, your actions. They notice if you're kind of disengaged or again, you're checking your phone all the time. You are on stage, so watch it. <laughs> the next piece that is very, very important is good grammar, punctuation, and spelling. Now I know we're all human, we make mistakes. We are not perfect here in this office. Overall though, you need to be your best. And what I've noticed because now we have everything auto spells for us and everything else, I'm seeing more and more mistakes. I'm seeing people who can't spell because uh, they don't need to think anymore for themselves. So move forward on that. Let's look at email etiquette. So two things I wanna say here, don't start your email with, hey, I noticed that more people are doing that. Hey, it's like, hey is for horses. Don't say hey to me, okay? It should be a proper hi, hello, good morning, good afternoon. Again, just because it's email doesn't mean you give way to protocol and etiquette. It is still a representation of you. And like for me, you're gonna turn me off if you say hey right away. I don't even wanna read your email. OK, so um, include your address and telephone number. I notice a lot of people now are just 
closing with their name. Well, believe it or not, we do still send things out in the US mail. Okay, maybe I wanna send you a thank you card. Maybe we need to ship something to you for training. Um, maybe we wanna send you a little gift once in a while or a thank you note. I think I said that, did I say that? Anyhow, don't make the reader have to dig and find your information. Now, for some of you, I know maybe your company has a specific uh, template they want you to use, but if at all possible, please include your address, please include your phone number. All right, Whew, let me catch my breath a minute here. It's already 10 of, and I'm looking, we have a lot of stuff to do. How's everyone doing, first of all, are you good? All right, we're gonna do just a little short piece on dress and then it's time to give away some great gifts. Okay, are you ready? Dress. Oh, wait a minute, I apologize. We gotta go up one more about handshakes. Handshakes, I looked into this. Um, they still are the uh, universal business greeting. And as it says, I made a note for you in case you're ever wondering, but usually the higher ranking person will offer their hand first. But if they don't offer it to you or your guest doesn't offer it, you can still extend your hand and say hello. And what I want you to be careful of, especially women, don't do the Wendy Wimpy handshake, okay? It's not giving somebody your little fingers or like doing this. A handshake, you're actually locking in at the thumbs, if you could kind of see me a little bit, and be firm, not too firm, but firm enough. It uh, lets people know that you feel confident and you're, you're welcoming them. Okay, let's see, now I'm into dress. As we all know, dress codes uh, have become much looser, much, 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 much more relaxed. And um, I'm not gonna get into specifics on dress. I know your companies have some of their own rules, their own policies. I'm just kind of overall sharing with you. Again, it's about you. It's about your career aspirations. It's about how you want to be perceived, how you want to be viewed by other people, how you want to be respected, how you want to come across as someone with confidence. And that comes through our dress. All right, as it says in your handout in the bold print, dressing smart shows that you put effort in and sound. All right, so, all right, if I don't know, uh, I don't know who's out there and what, because now I can't see the chat. Keep coming in though, but if you could hear me, just stay on. We'll keep going because at least you'll get the replay link. And we're still gonna give our, our prizes away. So let's yes. keep forging forward because that's what you do when you're assistants and that's yes. what I do. So let's go. We're not gonna let this stop us. Okay. All right, our so, five giveaways. And I gotta be cognizant of time now. So again, yes. from Purple Lizards promotion, this is awesome. Um, I have one of these. It's a Bluetooth wireless speaker. The This is phenomenal. And the, the volume and, and the sound is incredible. So I'm excited. Who wins this? Yes, Joan was actually rocking out in her office this morning on that one, getting ready for the webinar. Yeah. Uh, the winner for this is Randy Larson. All right, congratulations to Randy. Very good. We're gonna keep going here. We have a light up power bank it can charge two phones at once woohoo how cool is that yeah that's awesome okay so the winner for the light up power bank is susan knight and that's All right. k n i g h t like our golden knights <laughs> oh yeah very good all right next wireless bluetooth ear pods Works with any phone, very cool, really cool gift. I love this stuff. Those are neat. Uh, the winner for the wireless ear pods is Samantha Pommier, Pommier, P-O-M-M-I-E-R, Samantha. Congratulations, Samantha, awesome. 
Okay, uh, one of my books, who took my pen again? Took my pen again goes to Jennifer D'Antonio. Congratulations, and this okay. has been an Amazon bestseller, by the way. And we have, oh, this is super nice, beautiful. Really um, again, from Purple Lizards. It goes to Mary Beth Foster, B-O-S-T-E-R, Mary Beth. Congratulations. All right, we're gonna get back to some education. Here we go. So we left off at page five. I talked about dress. Now we're gonna move on about just being poised. So what do I mean by being poised? I'll try to give you some examples. It's when you walk light footedly with your head held high. So in other words, you don't wanna be a bull in a china shop <laughs> when you're walking through the offices, walking into an office, or think about when you have to walk into a meeting room, or maybe you have to walk into a meeting room and get your executive's attention. So poised are the little things, just the way you drink from a cup, or how you eat at a business lunch, and again, paying attention to those little things. If you are running late, letting the person know that you are running late. I can't believe how many times someone's running late and then they don't tell me till they're 10 minutes late and they say, oh, I was running late. No kidding. All right, <laughs> so give the person a heads up. Um, so how do you gain poise? Uh, I was raised around it. My mother and father were very poised. My mother was very, very ladylike and very strict with me. So I was raised around it, but how do you gain that? A couple ideas is just watch others. You know, again, always look to others who you admire in the workplace. What do they do? How do they do it? And then try to mirror that yet in your own way. Uh, you have to practice it. You just have to keep practicing and practicing until it becomes a part of you. And then another is to have a mentor evaluate you. To, to really seek out a great mentor, someone who you admire, and who you know will be honest with you because you want that honest feedback. All right, let's go on. We have dining etiquette. All right, there's, there's a host of things I have under this. And um, we're gonna keep moving along here. So when I was thinking of dining etiquette, thinking about assistance in the workplace, what are the various situations that you might uh, apply this. So you may have to take one of your company's clients or a vendor or maybe a visitor to a lunch, okay, or maybe a dinner. I know that's happened to me. Possibly you're going to host a business lunch or a business breakfast at your office. Um, what else? You're joining people outside, so you're attending some type of luncheon. Your executive maybe ask you to join him or her for some type of business lunch. I've done that in my office. In fact, it was a few months ago, we uh, went on a site visit to look for a venue for our 2020 um, conference for assistance. And I brought Brian, Malia, and Aaron along. So there we were having this fabulous lunch. Um, and so what was that etiquette and protocol that my employees needed to know? Or I remember when I was an assistant, my executive used to hold monthly employee birthday um, celebrations. So you, there are a lot of things, but now I've broken it down to you or for you into if you're hosting luncheon. So if you're hosting, here are some great little things that will make you shine. If you can, if you can get some budget, put out nice plates and napkins and silverware. Okay, like real silverware, okay? Or now there's a lot of plasticware that is really, really nice. So um, what sometimes you could use paper plates that tie into the season of the year. Or for us, the star is our logo. So we have star paper plates, we have napkins that have little stars on them, and we'll put those out when we have guests here. So again, take it up a notch. And then here's an important little piece. Display the things nicely. Don't just throw them out on the table. Oh, here's the plates and here's the napkins again. Take it up a notch. 
keep thinking, take it up a notch, place it nicely, it makes your guests feel so good. And it also makes you feel good, believe it or not. Um, if possible, you might wanna put fresh flowers out every once in a while. You know, again, when I think back, when I was a secretary and a lot of different lunches we would host, there were times for certain guests that I would want to get fresh flowers. So that's a really nice touch. And then a little note, if you are responsible for clearing food out of the meeting room, sometimes you are, um, get it out as soon as you can so it doesn't really kind of leave a smell in your meeting room, basically. All right, a few guidelines. Your, hopefully your parents used to tell you this all the time. Don't talk with your mouth full. Um, still holds true, no elbows on the table. Now a new one, no texting, reading emails, or playing with your phone at the table. Again, if let's say you are at a lunch and you have, you're waiting for your executive, has to get hold of you and you don't know when, then fine, put your phone on vibrate, let your guests know that you are expecting your executive to get a hold of you, and then get up and leave the table when you need to deal with that. Um, I'm amazed at now, so here's what I see when I'm hosting and conducting training sessions. And often, you know, we have our, our lunch break and a lot of times we're all eating together, you know, to keep the networking going. And what I'll find is that a lot of assistants will sit there while they're with three other people and they'll pull out their phones and they're all doing this. Instead, they should be talking to each other. They should be connecting with each other. They should be sharing. They should be learning about each other. So again, there's a time and a place for the phone. You're not gonna die without it, trust me. Um, all right, now let's have a scenario where you're attending a business lunch or a conference, let's say, or a dinner. So a couple things. Well, one, I'm sure you know, eat gracefully in front of other people. But here's a number two. Again, this is from our own experience, what we see. When you are in a buffet line at an event, don't load up your whole plate with food. You can go back for seconds, okay? And I'll, I'll tell you what happened several, several years ago. We were hosting, um, we were holding our conference in California and we were going to um, view this, this house. Supposedly it was a haunted house, big, gorgeous, humongous home. We bust everybody over and we were gonna, we had food out and everything first before we toured the house. So here's what happens. Now, when you host an event, you order so much food and that's it. I mean, once the food is gone, it's gone. You don't keep bringing it out and bringing it out and bringing it out a lot of times. So, well, sometimes you do, but in this instance, we had the food marked for 150 people. Well, the first few buses arrived and the people who got on that line, they loaded up their plates. So by the time the last bus of people arrived, you know it was left? Lettuce. That's what they had to eat, lettuce. So please, <laughs> the next one is um, when you are attending an off-site conference or some kind of training program, don't remove the food from the venue. I mean, typically it's not even allowed. We're not even allowed often to take food away from a venue for health safety reasons. But also again, something to keep in mind, and you probably, well, you should know this, but you may not know this. That event host typically will pay per bottle of water or per, per can or whatever, right? That hosting event has X amount of dollars that they've budgeted for an event. So the other thing is don't stock up on bottle of waters and cans to take back to your hotel room. Now, again, I'm just, I'm talking straightforward to you folks, straightforward. And you know, that's what I do. I'll tell you why, because I know the behind the scenes. If that, then that hosting company 
if they're charged per every bottle taken or whatever, their bill could go way up, way up. Then what happens is eventually they're affected and then eventually that hosting event has to raise, raise registration costs. Then everybody complains about that. So be really cognizant. It's okay to maybe grab a bottle on your way out, but just it's these little things that you need to think about again, that the little nuances. All right, let's move on. Eating out at restaurants. I imagine a lot of you are eating out at restaurants. Uh, again, for during your work hours or maybe after work, you're meeting up for a function. So the, the appropriate protocol, and again, I double checked all of this, is before the meal starts, shake hands with everyone, greet everyone, okay, introduce yourself. Then as soon as you sit down, place your napkin on your lap. I notice a lot of assistants don't do that when they come to training. It's one of the first things I notice. Now, you might be saying, well, why are you paying attention to all that? Because I just do. I'm sitting there and I know that's what you do. You put your napkin down. <laughs> so a little tip for you. Um, number three, this kind of helps you remember your beverages are always going to be on the right side of you. Your your bread plate's always going to be on the left of you. So you don't grab someone else's water or use someone else's bread plate, which can be embarrassing. So again, I'm trying to help you not be embarrassed. Um, a couple other things. If you do need to leave the table during uh, while you're still eating, all you need to do is place your napkin on your chair, not next to your plate, on your chair and push your chair in. That's how the waiter knows you're not done. And then um, what else? The oh, number five, this is a good little tip. So the waiter knows when to clear your plate. You take your fork and your knife and you place them at the five o'clock angle. That signals the waiter you are done. So again, a little tip, but it's an important tip. Okay, a couple other things. If you don't want wine, you know, if you're out and you have a wine glass there, just place your hand over the glass. That's all you do. Don't turn the glass upside down. And this is, this is a personal one for me. Please pass the bread. <laughs> I've been at dinners, business dinners with assistants and I'm really hungry and the bread is clear on the other side of the table and they're just sitting there talking away, not paying any attention to anything until I have to ask for the bread. So if there's bread there, even if you don't want the bread, offer it to the others first. OK, and then when it comes to food, um, Try not to pick messy things from the menu. I know they might taste really good, but it's it's hard to eat messy foods. So when you're out dining, don't order messy stuff. And also when you bring visitors in, don't order messy foods for them that are difficult to eat, no matter how good they taste. Okay, let's see. Um, we're going to do, okay, we're almost getting to the end. This is really, really good. So stay on, those of you who can stay on, because we have more prizes and I have a grand giveaway. Let's just look at some general rules. Is handwrite thank you cards. That's really, really special. If you want to stand out, instead of sending an email thank you note, which kind of says, I was in a hurry, so I'll quickly send you an email. A handwritten note. Smile. That's all you need to do. That is going to be the best thing you could do for your appearance is to smile at people. All right, let's talk about RSVPs. When you are sent an invite or your executive receives an invite, if it says RSVP, that means you respond even if it's a no. You don't just ignore it because you're not going or your executive isn't going. Okay? Um, just remember common courtesy, the please, the thank you. Don't forget, you know, to say that or do that. When you are talking to someone, look them in the eye, make eye contact. Again, don't be looking down or staring off somewhere. 
Again, really be engaged with your speaker. Again, when you're in a meeting, when you're in a training session, pay attention to the person who is speaking. It may also be someone else who's attending the meeting that is speaking, not just the person running the meeting. We talked about, I think, handshakes. Um, so I don't know why it's in there again. Sorry, I was, I was grabbing so much information for this. All right, we're getting down to business card etiquette, and then we're gonna do giveaways, and then we'll do some a few questions. So business card etiquette. I did look at, uh, I did Google this because I really wanted to look at how to properly hand a business card to someone. Um, and I believe it's the Japanese who are really good at this and very respectful and also Chinese. So think of your business card as an extension of you. So when we present our card, we should hand it to that person and have your name facing them so they can see it, right? As a receiver, when someone gives us a business card, I know sometimes my habit is grab the card and I tuck it in my bag. And then I realized I need to treat that card with respect. It's an, um, an extension of that individual. So to take a moment, look at the card, read it, read the title, you know, really, like I said, we should do as some of the other countries do. Uh, here in the United States, we should treat a business card with utmost respect. All right, Malia, oh my gosh. Okay, let's give away. We have five more items from Purple Lizard's promotion. So um, this is a actually a really, really nice shirt. Um, they do custom apparel, but I want to tell you, Malia and I were... <laughs> touching this yesterday we're like oh this feels really nice All right, so who's the winner of this this is awesome <laughs> you're telling on us joan i know uh, i know what can we say barry we can't help but look at all these goodies <laughs> that's true okay uh, the winner of the t-shirt is tracy sessinus sorry tracy. okay very good n-a-s tracy Okay, this is, if you're just joining us, I see our numbers keep going up. Stay on, because we, have, we haven't done questions yet in the grand giveaway. So um, this is a three to one fast charge. It will charge up your phone, ear pods, Apple Watch, wow, all at once and wireless. Woohoo! how cool is this? That's really cool. Yeah. That's very nice. So the winner of the three in one fast charge is Aileen Hopkins. Congratulations. That is a cool gift. Okay, we have three items left, and then we still have a big giveaway. All right. Um, my ever popular inner circle assistant. We still sell thousands and thousands of this book. Yes, we do. It's a real favorite. Melissa Fortner is our winner for the become an inner circle assistant book congratulations let's see my desk is filling up here <laughs> uh, underneath it all this is also a great book for advanced competencies for administrative professionals okay Danette Edwards congratulations Danette and last, ooh, this really cool purple hat. That is a cool purple hat. I'm going to switch my hair, but it's a really good color. <laughs> I love this color. Okay. Ooh. All right. The winner of the hat it's is soft. <laughs> what? It's really soft. Oh. <laughs> Goes well with the t shirt. Uh, yeah. The winner of the hat is Helen Washington. All right. Congratulations. Woohoo. All right, let's see, because we got all messed up here with our time. I think we we have about um, five, <laughs> five minutes left. Sorry if we go over just a little bit, if you can, can stay on. Malia, maybe just, um, I don't know, let's maybe take like three questions and then okay. I want to be cognizant of everyone's time. So then we'll right. get to our grand giveaways. Okay. Um, Devin, with... See, it says, let's see, Devin says, Joan, our admin team strives to keep the bar high, but it can get challenging to stay motivated when you're dealing with some workplace personalities. Any suggestions on how to maintain high standards 
in the face of adversity. Yeah, just keep going. You know, to me, it's it's um, really whatever you, whatever anyone else wants to do, that's up to them. You know, and I don't let it bother me. I keep trucking, and um, people are going to be aware of that and be cognizant. So you just like tune it all out. They can be who they want to be, and that's their choice, and that's their life. You continue to be who you are and keep the bar high. Okay. So in regards to dress code, Jesse says, I work as the admin to support to a support department. We don't see clients face-to-face. -face. We just interact through email or phone. My dress code is a bit more casual, uh, but at the same level as my director. Should I continue to follow her lead? or address to a higher business standard? Oh, well, it sounds like your director is really casual. So here's my thought process on it. You know, we don't have a lot of visitors here. I'm always on, most time I'm on site. So we don't, and there's, we're a very small office, but I still believe in dressing up a little bit, casually up, because it's how it makes you feel which projects through all your business interactions. So again, I'm not necessarily doing it always for other people. I do it for Joan because it makes Joan feel good. It makes me feel confident. It makes me feel like I'm ready for anything. And when I feel that way, it projects over to everything I do and to everyone I encounter that day. So that's really the thinking behind it. Okay, uh, let's see. Kathy says, I plan quarterly offsite meetings that are always out of the state or country, and I don't have the opportunity to do a site visit beforehand, so I rely on other assistants that are local to the area and also hotel concierge. Uh, sometimes with restaurants, for instance, they say the space will accommodate a group, but when they get there, it's too small or narrow. For now, I always try to aim for more space than needed, but I wondered if there's anything else that I can do. Uh, that's a really good idea to aim for more space. Tell them it's more people than what you have. Also, I don't know, sometimes you may want to send a visual setup. So let's say an example I'll use when we're hosting or doing a training event per se. While we, we have five tables of five people, we have 25 in the room, but I need a lot of space. We put out display tables. We have a table where we have all kinds of props for training. Then I need a table. So we actually have a diagram that shows them how we want everything laid out. So they see we need space in between things and we're gonna use some of that other space. So possibly providing a visual and then yes I would up the number of people but you could have the you could have the same number of people let's say you could have a hundred people in a room and they'll be all closed in because that room says well that's what we have room for a hundred yeah it's a hundred people all crammed in with tables that are this far apart versus they're in a room that the tables are this far apart okay yes. so visual would be probably good to add in addition to upping. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to say that diagram works really well yeah. with all of the WCA classes. It gives them the idea of, because we even put, Joan taught me this, we even put the um, the size of the tables we need. Mm -hmm. So 60 inch around or eight foot long, you know, rectangle tables. That way they get an idea of how much space we actually do need. You're right. Yeah, that's great, Malia. That's a good detail. Um, like even thinking about our conference uh, that we have for assistance, and we've been doing this for 26 years now, but we have a big area that our AV team has to take up in a mm -hmm. stage. So everything's measured. Again, don't just say, well, this is where a stage goes and this is where this goes. How much space do you need? So excellent, Malia. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, let's let's get to the big boys. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. All right. Now again, everyone's name is in this. So yes. the first that I'm super excited to give away is a registration to our world class assistant three day certification designation course in Las Vegas this fall. It's a sixteen hundred dollar value. So who is the lucky winner? 
The winner of WCA in Las Vegas with Joan Birch is Renee Wagner. W A G N E R. Renee Wagner. Yay, Renee. Yay. Here at the beautiful Red Rock Country Club is where we hold our class. So check it out. And then the other one I'm excited to give away. Um, is to the level one of my star achievement series. That is our flagship training program. Normally it is only taught on site at a company. This is a very special course. This year we are teaching it as a public course in Las Vegas at the beautiful Red Rock Country Club this September. It is also over a $1,600 value. So who's the lucky winner? The lucky winner is Tori Schroeder. Tori, okay, woohoo! Tori, I hope to see you here in uh, Las Vegas. All right, we have one more great um, item too. So again, for Barry Sokol and Ellen at Purple Lizards promotion. So what they're doing, let's see, I've got the notes here. Um, and Barry did put, we did put the link in earlier. I don't know how this is gonna work now with the chat, but Anyway, uh, you can receive a guide that um, he has three key benefits of promotional products in the business world. And um, if you, uh, what do I want to say, register to get that downloadable item, then you'll be entered into a grand prize package that they are giving away. So, okay, you'll add it to the certificates, good. Okay, yes. So thank you, Barry um, and Ellen from Purple Lizards Promotions in Michigan. Thank you for all these amazing gifts you have given us to, to give to the assistants. For all you assistants, before you go, I just wanna say you're fabulous, you're wonderful. We so appreciate you. We all love you. My entire team here at Office Dynamics, we think the world of you. We will, we will go to the, to the limit to help you guys and help you be successful. You're near and dear to our hearts and we hope you have a fabulous Administrative Professionals Week. All right, thank you everyone. I'm sorry, Joan, one last thing for all the prof all the admins out there that didn't win. Yes. Our oh, conference. Yes, 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 sorry. <laughs> for everyone else, until the end of April, till April 30th, we have $200 off conference registration. So we, we're going to have a fabulous conference this year, the Empowered Assistant amazing speakers you could check out the website officedynamicsconference.com $200 off until April 30th and bring your friends yes. <laughs> all right thank you everyone take care bye bye